the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Before we could continue today's discourse, we have to make sure that we are under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. if our the facets of the soul have not been controlled by lord god the holy spirit then we are neither useful to be as a loyal adherence to god's word nor we could be capable of being worth to this world which is unbelieving and perishing the only true reason why we are not able to understand the true purpose of our survival in this unique dispensation of the church age and in which each and every believer is being thumbed out as alekene ketesis new spiritual species of the christ is purely because we have not been controlled by lord god the holy spirit to know the true purpose of us being kept alive in this church dear brethren many are the men who come to the pulpit who approach the word of the lord without even knowing what is the essence what is the procedure what is the methodology where with lord wants to make each and every believer to be made known of this doctrine this great doctrine which has not been made known in the hidden which has not been made known in the ages past which has been hidden and now it has been manifestly been made clear to the church are we really taking and looking looking and taking the doctrine to the point of reality of the word so every believer has been given the privacy of the priesthood in order to confess his sin which is reborn 1 john 1 9 and make sure that he is taking a living partaking fellowship in the ministry of lord god the holy spirit and study the word of the lord and to be shed light for tizo to come to light even as such to get acknowledged what is the truth of the reality of bible doctrine so in the privacy of our priesthood we shall have a word of prayer and come back and continue our discourse so we shall bow down our head and have a word of prayer and get back into the fellowship with the prayers of our priest should by using rebound and learn the word of the lord father we are grateful for one more day to be added into our life by renewing of your mercies day by day help us to learn individually and corporately the way you have designed for us in eternity past to the maximum glorification unto Christ so that we the believers can yield and show forth the mightiest weapons of all time ever lived in this alkenic ethos it's not possible for us to be renovated or transformed until and unless it is the pure ministry of lord god the holy spirit followed by the indwelling shekinah glory so that each and every breath each and every decision each and every move each and every training that we do upon this earth not to be patronizing with this world so that we should constantly give and squelch and light to lord god the holy spirit but rather to be patronizing with thee who permanently indwells in us and cast to show for the great and the maximum wealth of all time for your legendary impact as an invisible hero to this extent father we pray that lord god the holy spirit will enlighten us as we are going to study today's word 
enlighten us in the things that have been required for us to be enlightened and cause us to transform our life to your thinking so that we might leave behind the great legendary impact of all time in this angelic conflict. We ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. So in today's topic, as we have been continuing in yesterday's tape, the unique spiritual life, the truth and the reality of this unique spiritual life, which we have been communicating yesterday, it's so great for us to understand that you and I, as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, has been permanently indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And whenever we do sin, either by thought, word, or deed, we lose the fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And later on, when we use rebound in the privacy of our priesthood, we get back into the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, again, resuming. Because the life that we are living without, the unique spiritual life, the doctrine that a pastor teacher preaches, if he has a bona fide gift and doesn't be properly prepared, or been faithfully enough to be prepared. And if he doesn't exactly preach the unique spiritual life of the mystery doctrine of the church age, then the pastor teacher is not doing his work. Nor we the believers who have been termed out as Alakene Ketesis. We are in the sense I'm referring to whole, the brethren. are also not able to execute the true spiritual life which has been designed for us in eternity past. This true spiritual life which is of so great and so important for us, that without this spiritual life, where are you going, will be a greater question for you in your day-to-day -day walk with the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Your day-to-day -day survival in the pure ministry of the divine dynaspure, operational one which has been given to you to be executed, will be constantly in doubt. As such, what is the life that you are living behind? Where is your destiny? Where is your ambition? Where is your will? And why is it so that you are not capable of understanding the simple truth? The simple truth which has been given for us, which is none other but the completed canon of scripture into our hands. When Jonah was told to go and preach the preaching wherewith I shall abide thee, or I shall teach thee, the second great commission in Jonah chapter 3, after going through the great trials and temptations, the sufferings from the belly of a fish, he realizes the graceness of the Lord. And now he learns a lesson. The shipwreck which was supposed to happen was not faithful, but he believed that the ship is faithful enough to deliver him into the realm of Nineveh. Many morons speculate as such. The acid which was there in the stomach of the fish might have caused him some sort of changes. When our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could divide the Red Sea asunder and make the people to walk, will not the people speculate how is it possible to divide the water into two divisions and it could be seen as a dry land and the people walked in it? Who has performed it? Is there any other God? There is no other God apart from my Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no other rock besides my Lord God Almighty. And there is no other way that you can think that the Red Sea could have been technically or scientifically to be proven. Because the world follows the slogan, I see, therefore I believe. But we, the believers of this church age, have to reverse the slogan and say, I believe, therefore I will see. Even the best 
telescopic, microscopic inventions to look and to search out diligently can never have the eye of a faith. What a faith eye can be. The greatest eyeball engineering which could be perceived by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through faith alone in Christ alone. There is no instrument that can match the eyesight of faith. And this eyesight of faith has really cleansed out all the things which are absolutely necessary for us. This eyesight of faith is what a believer has, the unbeliever doesn't have in this world. And this eyesight of faith which tells to us, Lord has taken Jonah into the stomach or into the belly of a great fish, where he was faithful enough to know what it was, the lesson of rebound. A lesson of the grace of Jehovah, a lesson of the mission of our Lord that it has to be accomplished through Him. And dear brethren, why aren't there enough people who could know the simple truth? As we, the believers of the church age, if you have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher and if Lord has given to you this gift to communicate the word, no matter however you may plan to go for Tarshish instead of never, Lord will get you back more horribly than that fish. Fish at least was absolutely faithful in doing its work in delivering out to the same mission who where Lord has chosen Jonah to be delivered. The same manner, Lord will take the circumstances to be designed in your life irrespective of the trials, irrespective of the temptations, irrespective of your failures or your negative attitude towards serving unto the Lord if you have the true bona fide gift of Lord God Almighty to serve Him. However, worst situations you may go through, Lord will get you back where He wants you to stand in this life. Do you know why? The only reason is Jonah was a man who prepared to preach what the Lord intended him to tell. He never wanted to mix something. He never wanted to tell wherewith it is out of context with the mind of Christ. He absolutely preached those things which the Bible doctrine demanded through him. He has already learnt a lesson, a lesson of great repentance. A lesson wherewith he can be now sustaining to easily be available to God's work at his word of a command. And Lord was easily ready to take him. And after his great lesson, he tells to them very clearly, you have to go and preach what I am preaching to you. The preaching wherewith I am abiding you. The preaching wherewith I am sending you to preach. And Jonah was not a man to do again the same mistake what he has done when he was set to go to Nineveh. When he did, he went to Tarshish. Now he will not do that because he knew what is that great Lord. Now he knew what was the purpose. And the exact trend what the great preaching of Jonah was, we will realize the trends of his proclamation to tell in a serious business which is there in a Christ ambassadorship, which has been even thus down upon us as we, the believers of this church age. It was the Old Testament customs when the time of Jonah that in three days actually the transaction should be proclaimed. The first day receiving of that ambassage as a prophet Actually, the second day is the sign of contract which they have to go through for the purpose for which he has come. And he has to proclaim and accomplish his work. And on the third day, he has to return back after finishing his work. That was actually the custom. The neighbor was of three days. That's what usually it is a custom which they have to follow. When this Jonah went and told 40 days, 
and Nineveh will be no longer kaput. Do you know what? Rather of taking the second day to sit and listen to the doctrine for which he has come, the first day itself when he proclaimed, the people were absolutely shocked, including the king. And they went off to repent in dust and ashes. Not only the noble, the wise. In fact, even the animal kingdom repented, they have not given to them as well the necessary fodder, the necessary water. And what did they do? God repented of the evil that should have been poured out upon Nineveh within 40 days. God changed because he said to Jonah, it is right that you are absolutely angry upon me. But I do have so many people, nearly two million, who are not capable of dividing from right and left. And that is a great failure on our part. As we, the believers of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, have not been proclaiming the great truth as Jonah proclaimed, has not been proclaiming the message of our Lord as he wanted to be proclaimed for those people. The only reason Second Peter 3, 9, which tells to us constantly, Lord is gracious enough, is long-suffering, is temperate. He wants none to be perished, but everyone to be realized to the knowledge of doctrine, to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and then grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The same principle is been applicable today as well. And that same principle should be executed by the two categories of the people. Number one, pastor, teacher, and evangelism. Number two, each and every believer, because by default you are an ambassador for Christ. You cannot say it is not my work for me to go and proclaim good news to the unbelievers. The only reality for you as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that you are an ambassador for Jehovah, you are representing Christ on this earth. You have to represent it either through your holy walk. You have to represent it either through the witnessing of your life. Or in fact, even if you can have some ability to communicate, you have to represent with your lips. Provided when your lips match with the words that you speak, with the holy walk of your life, your lips match with the witnessing of your life. And every believer, by default, they have to go. The first category of the people, they have to rise. Among them, the pastor, teachers, missionaries. This pastor teachers should grow up, should take the advantage in the congregation who are really interested for Bible doctrine to the posture realm. Train them up into the thorough knowledge from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. Give them the proper knowledge of the dispensations doctrine. Teach them with the isagogical, categorical, lexical explanation of the word. And cause them to abide with the preaching wherewith even John 1.18 tells, Exegioma is the order of the day, which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has explained for us in eternity past. And the people who come to our aid to learn from us, or when we have been rising missionaries in our churches, we have to train them up in the same principles, because the doctrine which Lord wants us to be communicated, it has to match with Him with his blueprint, with his teaching. We cannot go against the matching of the word of the Lord. We have to be in the matching of the word of the Lord, not against. If we are against, that meant to say the repentance of Nineveh wouldn't have been seen when Jonah preached. The true repentance of the people of Jeremiah, when Jeremiah was being mandated, you have to arise and go and tell to them not to be confounded. Tell them, cry aloud at the shrill of your voice and tell them what is the fault. The same thing with Ezekiel in 2.7, he tells to us, go and proclaim the word, whether they hear or forbear, but you have to go and proclaim. The same principle with me. Whether you hear to my tapes or not, I don't care. But my duty is to tell, I will tell, and Lord knows to whom this information has to be gone by preserving for it, and it will go for them without even deviating a single inch or a single mm do you know why in eternity past lord knows who are his people and why they're going to proclaim his word 
because the true principle when a true pastor really communicates the word it will be true repentance like the people of Nineveh repented the people of today's congregation, when they hear your message, will they change? Can they walk in the true reality of Bible doctrine? Can they walk to the maximum glorification of Jehovah? And how many days more you still want to continue with the cheap tricks, cheap gimmicks of the trends that are happening around? that we can find out in this church age, easily calling a moron a fool himself as an apostle, though the completion of canon has been completed and we are existing in the post-canon period. He tells I am a prophet. He tells I am a miracle healer. He tells I am a tongues crowd. Whom you are ditching with? How will your messages will be effective? When Jonah proclaimed, he achieved. Jeremiah proclaimed he formed the changes in the mind of those people. When Ezekiel proclaimed there were really people who believed his doctrine, the rattling of the sound of the bones. When Apostle Paul was been appointed to be an apostle to us, when he preached there were people who really repented. Can we tell that? Now you will ask the doubt of a question concerning apostleship of Paul. Because when Lord engaged Jonah to preach, his preaching resulted in repentance, change of mind. Jeremiah preached, people really learned from him, called him as a weeping prophet. Ezekiel preached, people learned the importance of being sanctity to the Lord. And when Apostle Paul preached, what did the people or what we the believers are learning? That will be a great question. That meant to say, then is Apostle Paul not been divinely appointed? Then you should ask me a question, if Apostle Paul was divinely appointed, then why were the people not changed to the glory and the image of Apostle Paul the way he was doing it? An absolutely right question. But to answer you, how many of us have really known the doctrine of Apostle Paul? How many of us have really known the isagogical, the categorical, lexical background of Apostle Paul when he was writing those epistles? How many of us have really known the maturity of the three church cage corpuses which has been written for us? Particularly the mystery doctrine, the corpus. Philippians, Ephesians and Colossians when he's been communicating. How many of us have really known and understood the duty and the principle of a pastor teacher when he was communicating to Timothy and Titus? How many of us have really made known to understand what are in Christ we are in Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, and what we are way through Christ in the book of Romans. Why isn't we are capable of understanding the simple truths? Because we are not able to get out from gospel as well as acts. Where the people are still thinking it is better to be disciple, it is better to be this, it is better to be that. But after the completion of canon, our Lord has given to us incompletely. After the first century AD in the epistles when Apostle Paul was writing that every believer is a saint. And we the believers being over here come out as saint. Until and unless we really learn the doctrine. How can the pastors communicate the doctrine? The Lord uses only faithful men and prepared men. He doesn't use if you are only faithful, you have to be prepared. The spiritual leadership demands the two qualities to be fulfilled. Number one, the fear of Jehovah. And number two, you have to be very much careful, dear brethren, when the Bible tells knowledge. The same qualifications which have been used by the same humanity of Christ while he was alive on this earth. And you may ask me where it has been written. It is there in the book of Isaiah when, when Isaiah writes about the properties of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The great discourse in chapter 11. The two qualifications which have been required for a spiritual leadership. And if we as a pastor teacher today do not obey the both things, then the Lord is never going to use you out irrespective of you being born to a pastor in a great family. 
The only reason why the men of today's world are not able to understand the true principles and the duties and the responsibilities which have been laid down upon the shoulders of a pastor teacher is purely they have getting afraid to look. The true wisdom of Jehovah. And that true wisdom of Jehovah cannot be looked when you get patterning yourself or patronizing yourself with the world. The world of this cosmos diabolicus, which is nothing but pride of life, lust of flesh, and lust of eyes. No matter how well, how better you think you can perform. No matter how well, how better you think you can do great things. In the energy of your flesh, you cannot even come to be increased by one millimeter of an inch. To show forth and to consider that you are great and Lord is wrong. No. Lord has set and ordained certain principles, the procedure, the method, the principles which have to match his integrity, his character, his loyalty. And when, he's in, when in his own integrity he did not spare his own son, but he made it through to follow the techniques and the procedures to rise early in the morning and send for him to learn the word of the Lord as per Isaiah 54. Then who are we to be failed in the principle to be prepared to be a true speaker for Jehovah? And why aren't the true repentance as Jonah preached to the Ninevites today in the church age? Because the pastors have not come, up, come out from the Gospels as well as act, from the book of Acts. I don't deny that doctrine has been required, but Gospels represent for you to the Old Testament in the hypostatic union, except the book of John in the verses 13, chapters, chapters 13 through 17, the church age doctrine which teaches us the conviction ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the importance of Bible doctrine in chapter 17, and the true wine which we could be yielding the fruit of our Lord, and chapter 14, the indwelling of Shekinah glory, who is none other but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The true power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, plus the indwelling Shekinah glory will yield the true transformation that has been required for us to be attained in this unique spiritual life. And as long as we fail to look upon the true transformation, the true renovation of our thinking, the true metamorphosis, so long you as a believer will fail to realize the true duty of you in this church age. In fact, even pastors are not capable of coming to look what is this of metamorphomai in 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. The metamorphomai in Romans 12, 1 and 2. The Mount of Transfiguration of metamorphomai of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, where is our objective not to be like Him. Though we have the old sin nature, the spiritual resurrection when we reach the spiritual maturity in Christ, and why are the men not able to understand this simple truth? Have you ever noted? It is purely the negligence of Bible doctrine. The pastor teacher in the pulpit have lost it. The believers in the pews who have been sitting, they have lost the importance of the desiring for truth. Love for God. And why is it so? Because there is no true preaching like Jonah. There is no true repentant heart like Jonah when he failed the first mission. Warwith he was being ordained to come back and look and to be there available. But he said, no, I don't go there. I want to go to other way, other method. Then what did Lord do? He corrected him. The great lesson that anyone can learn if you are a bona fide gifted pastor teacher. From the belly of a fish. What was his oxygen? What was his breathing? What was his food for three days? All may think it is just a comic story or a drama to be taught in the Sunday school. It is a dogmatical fact. The way how Jonah was into the belly of the fish, the way how Lord divided the Red Sea asunder, Lord is the only Lord who is capable of doing it. Do you know why? Because the idols have no breath in them. They are breathless. 
and the way how these people they calculate to know the true omnipotence, omnipresence, and omniscient knowledge of Jehovah in the vainness of their mind being till dichotomous in nature is they think how is it possible for a mind to be in the belly of a fish that's what we see and we tell to you in the eye of faith not according to the eye of this empiricism or rationalism of these people in this world so Jonah learnt a great lesson and he did perfectly the duty what Lord wanted him to do. Paul learnt a great lesson for the woe that he has paid, rebounded and got back and did the duty wherewith he has been told to write Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians. We, the church age believers, being given the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, permanently being infilled by the Trinity. How much are we really doing our work to get back to the true repentance like Jonah's ministry? How many of the people will be really to the maximum glorification of Christ when we appear at the judgment seat of our Lord? How many of us will really come back to the reality of growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine? And how many of us have really given number one priority to put in our pulpits this unique spiritual life, the two power options, the three spiritual skills, the ten problem-solving device, and the four other stages of this unique spiritual life. The two power options rebound, followed by the filling of the Holy Spirit. The three spiritual skills, filling of the Holy Spirit plus human IQ, which will be resulting in the spiritual IQ. The ten problem-solving devices, the first five for, adult, for, for childhood, the next five from six to ten, it is adulthood. In that first five, again, you do require rebound, the filling of the Holy Spirit as a second one. The third, dark, faith was technique, you learn the basic principles. The fourth one, grace orientation. The fifth one, doctrinal orientation, either of the one which would could change. And now we when you enter, and enter into the sixth stage, the personal sense of destiny, the hope, elpis, an absolute confidence, followed by seven and eight, personal love towards God, impersonal love towards all mankind. Plus, number nine, which is nothing but sharing the happiness of God, and number ten, Occupying with Christ, as our Lord mandated, occupy till I come. How can we be occupied with the thinking of Christ till they can come? Or till the rapture could occur? Only you can be occupied with Christ in him till there is a true point of realization for you in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Apostle Paul alone attained that resurrection. Apostle Paul alone was capable of telling to you, but he said, no, I will not tell, because it is mandated for me not to tell. And Apostle Paul affirms to the fact that there is heaven, the so-called today cryonics crowd, if not some of the Baptist pastors who are following this trend. Roman Catholic theory of scientific evolution or scientific resurrection, cryonics, clonings, and in fact, even they have so many other things like the Big Bang Theory as evolution. They want to see and then they want to believe some of the things which they could pertain. Innovation without truth is no progression. It is a debauchery trend, a regression to the people who are being there as believers in this unique dispensation of the church age. It's a great obstacle. It's a great stumbling block. With our Lord, there is only one thing which works that is nothing but naked faith. The more nakedness which Adam absorbed in Eve when she ate the truth. More than that nakedness has been required for you. Only his pure word. Because of that great nakedness, what Adam looked into Eve caused him to fall into this great sin. He knew what he was doing. He was cognizant enough. Today, by looking upon the naked word of the Lord, are we falling prostrate to Christ and to worship him and to praise him and to get maximum glorification unto him or not. Since we do not look upon the naked faith, we are not capable of looking it. If Adam wouldn't have looked her so nakedly, maybe he wouldn't have sinned. Maybe it's a clause when we get back to heaven, the last God God the Father, what would be the best suggestion for that? But Adam was cognizant, he was ignorant, he lusted for her. 
and he fell for her. When we see the naked word, the pure word of Bible doctrine given to us, we are not lusting for it because we don't have naked faith in us to believe his word and take it for sure, take his verdict for pure. We just want to again go for empiricism, rationalism, investigate, cross out, check out, see this, do this, do that. What a great shame it is on our part that till date we are not capable of understanding the true reality of the word of the Lord. Till date we are not able to understand the true purpose of a pastor teacher which has been laid down upon our shoulders to communicate the importance of this doctrine of dispensations as well and to proclaim to the entire world what it is that you, when you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what advantages you have in him. And why is it that we are not able to understand these things, do you know, dear brethren? Purely we have rejected the naked faith in his word. That's why there are no maximum glorified believers in Christ to produce, to go forth this unique spiritual life. In fact, even certain people do not even know what is this unique spiritual life. Either they might have not even heard. For them, we may be telling to them some technical things of the word of the Lord, and they may say, leave that nonsense to the theologians. What I have to do, I have to live a moral life. At least if you could drink the sincere milk of the word of the Lord at your spiritual birth, born again, you will be telling, I have been perfectly moral now. Let me go and look upon something perfection, something more. The tendency of a man is when he's been qualified to be fulfilled with his basic needs, he asks something more. If you have a 32-inch wall screen attached TV, television set, that present tense, what I'm telling. When he's having some money, he will decide, why only just 32? I will look for more. Let me go for now a bigger one. He, would, wasn't he, he wouldn't have been satisfied with 34 or 32. When you want something more, the mobile gadgets, what we were using 10 years back, now have become toys in the hands of the kids. But what do you have now? We have all the Android sets. It was earlier 256 MB RAM. Now it is 512. Then later it came to 1 GB. Now it is 4 GB, 3 GB. When there is a sudden upgradation, you want to go for that. Why couldn't you be happy with the old 10 years handset? Exactly, dear brethren, the morality, what we learn from the word of the Lord, is not just morality to be matched with the unbelievers. It is of a Christian virtue wherewith you and I have to be communicating. This great Christian virtue wherewith you and I have to be inculcated into the minds of our hearers. And this great virtue, greater than this virtue, is nothing but the unique spiritual life. From a basic handset, now we are into Android. The best one would be iPhone. Many people prefer to that. And furthermore, from there, when you come, it would be a very single point for you to note. Tomorrow, after 10 years, what it is, we do not know. And they may say, because of this one principle, after 10 years, what the innovation may be, they are forsaking God and they are saying resurrection can be a claim. No. Why all this have been made simplified, more sophisticated than the earlier one is to save your time. Why? In order to get back that time to the praise of the glory of Jehovah. You may think what Lord knows about these things. He is omniscient. You may tell how Lord can tell all these things. He is omniscient. He is designed. If it is not from his mind to allow the people to do this innovation, Lord wouldn't have made it, caused it to happen. Fear God better rather than fearing the technology of this world, which you think it could be capable of showing you the next generation. The next generation of your own scientific invention, which you tell about cryonics or cloning, which could be the resurrection. No, resurrection is Lord's process. It is Lord who has to do it. Not we, not our technology, not the aliens theory which the people want to claim now. Aliens have come around. 
That will be one of the silliest jokes in this 21st century. When the people think they don't have anyone, any, anything more to explore in the movies, so we shall explore them through this alien's technology. And one silly joke will be like that Lucy movie which says, the brain will multiply itself from 20% till 30, 40, 50, and then end up in 60. And when, when, when it ends up in 100, you are no longer as a human being, but you just vanish off. That's what they want to tell as a resurrection, a rapture. All the stupid jokes keep apart. Concentrate upon the word of the Lord which has been given to us. The pure word which tells to us. Though the heaven and earth will perish, but not my word. And how many days more we are here to enjoy our things in the stupidified thoughts of this church. Where this church has been communicated to be the true growth, not to be in the simple basic handsets, but it has to come to that great Android handset. The sincere milk will let you out from morality. The word will cause you to grow up in doctrines. The meat will cause you to discern what is right and what is wrong. And every believer has been called to the perfection and completion in the knowledge of Jehovah, as per Colossians 1, when Apostle Paul writes to them. According to the grace ministry where Lord has made me a dispensational minister for you, I have to see that every believer should be perfected and completed in the knowledge of light. And where are we still? Still battling around, not even to be qualified with the morality of an unbeliever, because he is far more superior than us in morality. Then when you will take the bread, when you will start to grow up, when you will thirst for the word of the Lord, and when you will come to be in a position to discern what is right and what is wrong, and when you will realize what is the true doctrine, and when you will come to a point of conclusion, what about the defunct spiritual gifts? And when you will come to a point of the conclusion, the permanent spiritual gifts? Dear brethren, how careful you plan for your marriage. How careful you plan for the money that has been required for that marriage. Isn't it a great shame for us to look that we aren't even careful to plan the true purpose of us being kept alive in this church age? How shameful it would be for us when we appear at the judgment seat of Christ, as our Lord already reprimanded them during the period of his Gospels. You are wise enough, you are cunning enough to know and tell according to the climatic conditions what it will be and what it will be not. Whether it will rain or whether it will be sunny day. And we are exactly the same terms now. We are cunning enough to protect ourselves. That's what my daughter needs, what my son needs, what my family requires, what my church looks and what I have to give them, and what will be the money that I can earn from them. In everything, you are pakka calculative. You are 200% right in your calculation. But dear brethren, when we come to the point of calculating in the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the true survival of you being kept alive in this earth, why are you not calculative? To become calculative, the minister should communicate the doctrine who has been kept for you as a pastor teacher. The pastor teacher should make for you the effective end of the true repentance to come in you as Jonah brought to the people of Ninevites the true doctrine of this unique spiritual life of the church age. This mystery doctrine of the church age wherewith you have been told additionally to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine through Peter. We have been told through Apostle John, let him do the things that have been given to him, whether to good to good, to bad to bad, to worse to worse, or to the best to best. Everyone works I have in my hand, I'm going to give them reward. A great recommendation for us to be corrected. And why are we still not able to find the true repentance like Jonah's ministry in our life? Because no true pastor teaches in communicating the word, that's why. Why there are no true pastor teachers? Because you as a believer have not prayed to the Lord to send you. Those true pastor teachers who shall fill you with knowledge and with understanding, who come from the heart of Lord God Almighty, as per Jeremiah 3.15. And the lips of the pastor should possess knowledge, but today lips, the pastor has been proclaimed with sheer utter of hypocritical lies. It's as simple as tell the man, tell, I will tell the rule. That is what they have come to each and every denominational teachings. That there will be the true repentance. Then it is a great shame for us to note even the animals got repented. 
through Jonah's preaching. Today, though we preach, there aren't enough mature mind to be repented, far less we can think. Animals can also repent through our messages. Dear brethren, a wise man will be a kind even to his animal. How can he become wise unless he knows the steps of procedure to be wise? The only mediator to be wise is none other but Bible doctrine. The only mediator is none other but the pure ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when we confess our sins and get back into the fellowship of Lord God Almighty. The pure mediator is nothing but the sincere word of the Lord. And how many days more we are still lacking around and looking around for those stupidified thoughts, preaching them, telling them about morality, preaching them and explaining them about XYZ trends, causing them to tell to the entire world, I have built the church in 54 days like Nehemiah did. Causing the world to tell to the entire world that, see, so many people are following me and they are really snatching out my portion of doctrine that I am communicating to them. It is not that the people increase when the portion of doctrine has been given to you. The people will really change their mind and stand firm to stand to the reality of the blueprint of Christ and his mind. That's the true repentance they have to get. Either you are present or absent, they have to be the same, said Apostle Paul, for us in Philippians 2. Today we are, tomorrow we don't know where our Lord leads us or where we depart from this earth. But when you as believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would hear the doctrine, what we are communicating to you, you have to be the same because we all will appear at the judgment seat of Christ. And we are not the one to show forth and lead Ig ignorance, telling to the Lord, give me one more chance that I will go back to this earth and do my life again. No, once you have gone, you have gone. If those Ninevites would have been repented not with a true heart, Lord would have definitely brought resurrection. Since they have really repented with a true heart, Lord did not get the destruction then and then decided to be told through Jonah. The lesson that we learn, grace always precedes judgment. Today for each and every believer's life, before he could die, grace comes through the past teacher ministry. Provided that believer really hungers for the word of the Lord. As a deer pants for the water and Lord will give that water to the deer, so a believer should pant for Bible doctrine and Lord will send through a white pastor teacher the doctrine which has been required for you to learn. There will be no other substitution from Jehovah, no other methods from our Lord that this could be the procedure, that could be the procedure. No. Our Lord gives to us very simple, very humbly, in very truth, the doctrine that is necessary for us to be communicated provided you as a believer really desire for it. You as a believer really look for the true fellowship of Jehovah. You as a believer want to leave behind a legendary impact in this angelic conflict by growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And you as a believer give number one priority for the word of the Lord. Dear brethren, Jonah had a fruitful ministry for him when he preached the proclaiming what Lord has told him to preach. Jeremiah had a fruitful ministry. Ezekiel had a fruitful ministry. Paul is really longing to have the truthful ministry through our lives as well. Because we cannot find enough men who could be to the maximum glorification of Christ by leading behind the spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity. The lives that have been given for us uniquely in this Yusabaya, godliness, true genuine godliness. The standards wherewith he has been given to us through Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians. When we really execute that, when we really fulfill it, that will be the true fruitful ministry of Apostle Paul in our lives as such. 
He has already achieved that fruitful ministry in these generations of 20, year, 20, 20 centuries. Maybe the blessed one are those who really had a true fellowship with God, who might have attained to that maximum glorification through the proper revolution of Bible doctrine. But we at the same time living contemporary towards the Lord from, 19, from BC 4 to AD 30, the same period, from AD 1996 till to the point of AD 2030, the believers in Christ, each and every day being accountable, each and every day being profitable to Christ. We have to yield the maximum glorification of our Lord and say, Lord, if it had been literally present, we would have really followed you through the disciples of Christ. But though your written word is literally present, the failure of the communication from the pastor teachers to inculcate has caused a great failure, the havoc of Christendom ending up with apostasy. Lord, at least help us to find few men who could be for MGG. It is not the quantity, but the quality of spiritual realm in the word of the Lord that really gives maximum glorification unto Christ. Quantity of unbelievers believing in Christ, maybe that is the moment of expression of glory in Christ. But the true glory in Christ will come when you as a believer grow up from spiritual baby to spiritual adult. Taking the sincere milk and then the bread and then the meat. We do know we don't get married to babies. We marry to that woman who is quite capable to match our maturity of our thinking. Because the soul compatibility is required rather than the physical compatibility. And in that soul compatibility, when it has been required, then you take it for your marriage. The same thing when Eskel was been told, I will take out the delight of your eyes and you should not wait. A woman will be a delight to a man, provided she is capable of meeting his standards of thinking. Not the physical realm. Physical beauty will be flopped out, vanishes. And that's a shock for so many women who spend much of the time in cosmetics. Physical beauty will vanish. There is nothing in the upper beauty. There is something and everything in the inner beauty. And we, the believers, have been designed for that. And we have, been, we have been given to take the thinking of spiritual realm as per the mind of Christ, as per his attitude, as per his word. And to be really renovated to the standards of his thinking, dear brethren. Then Lord would be pleased to get married to us. As we will not be pleased to marry a newborn baby. So Lord wants you to be growing up. The newborn baby, as she grows up till to the age of 18 or 16, or till to the point of a realm which we, they take from puberty, from 24 or 24 or odd, when she has been fully grown up, does not the nature itself teach to you a baby to be married? It takes so much of time, minimum 18 years or then 24 or 25 years, so that she could be called as a perfect beauty of maturity, not only physically as well as mentally. Why, during the period of Esther, when the king of Vasti went and rejected the king's command, why they have been taken so many women to select, and the selection was only through Esther, because she was good in wisdom, she was good in beauty, she was good in spirit. Exactly, dear brethren, even when you are getting married physically to your wife, you take all these qualities. Only for temporary realm, you do not even know that you are going to die on the day of your marriage or you are going to die after 100 years with her. You do not even know with her how many days you are going to stay. But how much more pure you need to be considering towards the word of the Lord when Lord searches out in us as we the believers. When he wants to marry us, if you are still spiritual babies, how can he marry you? So being born again by multitude of unbelievers, Lord is not happy. He will be saved. You will save your own life. You will have your eternal life. The unique expression of glory begins at the moment of salvation. But the true maximum glorification of Lord comes when each and every believer reaches to the status quo of maximum glorification when he passes down the three adult stages, spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy, and then the spiritual maturity. And as strong meat belongs to the one who is mature, 
You and I have to take a consideration to the point of reality. That strong meat is a perfect man who can discern what is right and wrong. Even in the doctrine, what is pleasing to Jehovah, we have to look. In Proverbs 1, we have a great passage which tells to us, When I sent them hearing, when I sent them to teach, they hated my knowledge, therefore I will send sudden destruction upon them. If you as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ hate knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, if it is not there, it will eventually cause you to hate knowledge. Though in a time of your sudden destruction you plea unto the Lord, the Lord is not going to answer it. Do you know why? Because you are not matching with the thinking of Christ. Even the woman whom you are married, and she is not in terms in alignment with you, will not hate her. The same pattern happens to each and every believer's life. Why you are not able to match up in physical realm? Purely because you have not come to the point of a common point wherewith your thinking, her thinking should match. The same thing over here in the word of the Lord as well. The thinking should match. The reality should come. And how the thinking can match? If you hate knowledge, if you hate the fear of the Lord. Have you not known? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need to learn this doctrine, dear brother, and then you can match the thinking with Christ. And the greater we fail to understand the simple dogmatical truths, the greater will be a reality for you not to know, not to understand. Why you have been kept alive even after salvation, so that Lord can really enjoy the true beauty, the spiritual beauty in you. When the pastor teacher ordains, when the pastor teacher puts you the great ordination of armaments upon you, to the realization of his beauty. So dear brethren, the tape is too long. We shall continue in the next tape because the only reality is that I don't want you to go waste by the people that they think it is a too long and they cannot hear. I wanted to give them the information in a precise manner because much of the time the sophisticated realm in this world that they pass along or they get along within an instant of a second the things to be done but that is not possible with the spiritual edification of the soul it takes time it takes thinking it takes inculcation it takes a repetition of the word so that you can come to the knowledge of the reality of the word of the Lord so that you can come to the knowledge of the reality of Bible doctrine you can come back and look and understand why you have been kept alive and this is a day by day process as physically the kid which she has to grow up till the age of 18 the legal age to get married and we certainly wait till that age to get married then how much more we are here not to learn that even the spiritual edification takes time Apostle Paul was already a learned man through his education from the Old Testament scriptures. He took, he himself, three and a half years in Arabia to get the spiritual edification of his soul. He learned the doctrine and then he came to proclaim the doctrine. The greater revelations as Lord revealed to him. He has written and kept for us. Then where is the fruit of his ministry today that we can yield the maximum glorification of Lord with the maximum amount of believers in Christ? We have only quality, but no. We have only quantity, but no quality in this life. And does not the nature itself teach to you? It takes time to be growing up. Not just like a simple edification process that you can type. You can get the things done. That is an absolute fakery in the realm of Pentecostal crowds, dear brethren. Whether you take it, consider it or not. These Pentecostal crowds who think gibberishly when they have been controlled by the Tangasamutas demon, Numa Python, which is, they want to tell, they are verified, they are speaking. No way. No chance at all. The defunct spiritual gift is a major failure today to be understood. The major failure not to be understood, the permanent spiritual gifts, is a major failure to know and to understand the doctrine of dispensation. And as long as they fail to understand the doctrine of dispensations, and as long as these morons who are pastors in the pulpits, who do not communicate the doctrine of dispensation with the isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word, so long such kind of a cults will rise. Such kind of an apostasy will come. 
and there will be heresies upon heretics. And there will be a great shame in the sight of Jehovah that these are the men whom Lord has trusted. Lord knew the power of Jonah, he took him. Though he went on the wrong way, he corrected him and he bought. Because he proclaimed what Lord wanted him to be proclaimed. When we have been given the bona fide gift, will not be our Lord ashamed when we are not communicating this unique spiritual life. Then what is the life that we are communicating without this unique spiritual life in this unique dispensation of the church age? And what is the doctrine that we are teaching to those people without communicating the unique doctrine of this unique spiritual life? The three adult stages, the fourth one, ex-anastasis, exit resurrection, whenever it may occur. When the Lord finds seems fit to raise us from the dead. And that doesn't mean that we will be sleeping, but rather we will be face to face before the Lord. In whichever manner the interim body which Lord wants us. The true resurrection body like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he seems fit, he's going to give. That is exit resurrection, the fourth one, which you need not worry. Lord knows when to do because his timing is absolutely perfect. We need to wait. And if Lord has still kept us alive over here on this earth, he wants us to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine and to yield and show forth maximum glorification unto Christ. So, dear brethren, the tape is too long. We shall continue in the next tape. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to be Lord God the Father, that to believe upon Christ, that is the moment it will be shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you as a believer is none other but, for an unbeliever is none other but, believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Acts 16.31 And whereas for the believer, the great manner is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. To grow up in grace, you require two things. Number one, rebound in the privacy of your priesthood. Number two, be controlled of the Spirit, as Lord God the Holy Spirit searches the Scriptures. Investigate so that you can come back and learn the Word of the Lord. And number three, for the pastor teacher, the great manner is to carry so laga and herald the Word in season and out of season. So that Bible doctrine, which has to be number one priority in our lives, the communication as pastor teachers, number one priority. As believers, it has to be number one priority to hear the word of the Lord. By the pastors, to isological, categorical, analytical explanation of the word, or the dispensing technique of dispensations, the pastor teachers have to communicate. And the damn are witnesses which involves in them permanently. Number one, the Trinity. Number two, the Bible in our hand, each and every word, have we communicated it or not? And number three, dear brethren, whether you take it, consider, believe it or not, will be our hearers. If there are no hearers, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our hearers. But what is our duty? Our duty is to communicate, 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 and inculcate. It's a process. It's a day-by-day -day edification, not the gibberishly jumping around or speaking in tongues and telling that we have been edified, which is a very, very wrong and blasphemous, which doesn't match with the character of my Christ. After the completion of canon, since they do not have proper history knowledge, nor the knowledge of dispensations, people have been making blunders in the pulpits, rising to the rampant of apostasy to the core in this unique dispensation of the church. And that too in the post-canon period of this church age. Dear brethren, ponder over these things as we continue in the next tape. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.